Hey, back in October, I went to the Out of Oregon conference in Newport, Oregon. It's part of the Out of Chicago series, and it was just a really fun event. There were photographers there from all around the world, and we just had a great time. And the lineup of instructors they had was excellent. One of the other instructors was Blake Rudis. Now, Blake's widely known as being a Photoshop guru, somebody who's just very knowledgeable and educated in all things Photoshop, and his Photoshop instruction is uh, really second to none. So as a fellow Photoshop educator, it was a lot of fun to meet Blake and get to pick his brain a little bit. And Blake's also known for uh, having a background in art and being very knowledgeable about the use of color theory in photography. And in talking with Blake, it made me realize that that is not something that is uh, one of my strong suits. I, I don't have a, uh, any sort of background in color theory and I'm very happy with the colors that I work with in my photos and I'm able to get, I think, very clean colors uh, and work with the colors that are there. But in terms of using color palettes and the concepts of color theory to create certain moods in my photographs, that's something I really don't know anything about. Now. The other day on one of my YouTube videos, Blake popped in and said, Hey, Sean, I've uh, had some questions lately about exposure blending and your name got dropped. And I said, well, Blake, this is great timing because I've been having some challenges with color grading. So I thought this would be a great chance to give Blake a call and ask him some more questions about color and how he works with color and see what he can help me out with. So stick around because when we get back, I'll be on a call with Blake Rudis. Sean, can you hear me? Can you see me? No, I can't see you yet, Blake. Okay. Can you, oh, you can hear me. Okay. Oh, here it is. Here's the start video button. Okay, cool. Hey. Hey, there you are. Hey, what's up, man? How are you? Good. How are you doing? Good, good. Yeah, it's good to see you. You too. Hey, uh, I'm calling because I, I've been working on some images. I'm trying to work with color and... Um, you know, I'm, I'm not at all trained in color theory or, uh, you know, I'm pretty much just usually kind of flying by the seat of my pants or going by feel when it comes down to color. And uh, I just know that when it comes to color theory, you've got a great background and good education and, um, and, a, lot of, and a lot of educational content around that. And because I'm particularly struggling with a couple of these images with color, I thought uh, it'd be worth giving you a call and seeing what you could show me. Cool. Wow. I'm flattered. I mean, there's like maybe, I don't know, four other people you could have called, but hey, <laughs> I'm glad you called me. <laughs> no, I think Blake Rudis is the guy. <laughs> awesome. Well, you know, I have some questions too, because I recently had at least three people email me asking me about exposure blending. So um, I'll show you some cool stuff on color theory. And then would it be cool if on the same call, I just kind of flip over and we record this exposure blending stuff too? Oh, absolutely. Oh my gosh. That's uh, that, that's also great. Yeah. So, you know, feel free to share this on your YouTube channel if you want, and then I'll share your exposure blending stuff on mine. Great. Yeah. We'll have a video on each channel and people can check them both out and hear, uh, hear the answers to both of our questions. Perfect. That's cool because um, that way we all learn something here. That's awesome. Yeah. All right. That's all right. great. Cool. So color theory and color grading, man. Oh, where do I begin? Okay. So um, let me just go ahead and, and share my screen here. Um, I got a couple things on here. I'll kind of just go over, you know, a couple uh, the theory of it, why I do it. And then I'll give you a little bit of practical application stuff. Does that sound about right? Yeah, about right? that would be really helpful. All right. Let me share my screen here. Okay. All right. Can you see my screen? Yeah, that looks good. Perfect. Okay, cool. So it should look like, um, looks like a bunch of little ice gems. Yeah, what a cool. Yeah, thanks. This is pretty cool. I was out in Yosemite, and man, the, the landscape was just doing some really wonderful things. Um, as the sun was coming up, um, these little ice bubbles were just kind of popping on the ice. And within you know about an hour, this had all disappeared. So it was really kind of cool. But I wanted to showcase that. And this is basically what color theory and color grading are all about, all right? So I'm out there. I'm in Yosemite. It's freezing cold. And I've got these beautiful little ice pockets that are coming out. But the camera itself is kind of like, if you think about, um, you know, why we do uh, higher dynamic range shooting, you know, when we think three exposures, that's because our camera can really only record one instance of light at any given time. Well, the same is true for color. So it records whatever color you're telling it to record. 
Uh, if you're shooting in raw, it's going to give you, you know, if you're auto white balance, you can always change the white balance, but it's not going to be able to record your feeling and your emotion that you have with that. Okay. So just like we uh, experiment with, you know, moving and manipulating tones, we do the same thing with our colors to get our feeling across. So with this one, I really wanted this look and this feel of this ice to be cold and help kind of push those little, you know, ice gems kind of out a little bit as well. Um, it's really kind of cool because this is an image that one of my subscribers had also worked on a variation of this in one of the courses that I provided and uh, really inspired me with color theory. You know, th that's the great thing about color is that it can inspire people in many different ways. So here I've got, you know, kind of this bluish feeling on this. This image. Now, to kind of understand color grading and color theory, they're two separate things. Color grading is the act of making your image a certain color, whereas color theory is what you use in order to make it that color. That's kind of the theory behind it, is using color theory uh, to make the color grade that we want to get our mood and our emotions in the image so that the viewer sees and feels what we felt when we saw it. It's kind of like reverse empathy. You know, when you're empathetic to somebody else, you feel the way they do. Well, here, what we want is we want people to feel the way we feel. So we have to reverse that empathy a little bit, but we have to give them some information to go off of on that. So that's the theory on it. Here is the how I do it, okay? So how I do it, there's many different ways that you can color grade. Um, you can use uh, just about, I mean, even if you're in Adobe Camera Raw or Lightroom and you manipulate a temperature or a tint slider, that's technically color grading in a way. If you move that magenta to add a little bit of color to it, it adds some mood, it adds some feeling, it adds some emotion to it, right? Yeah. So we're gonna take that concept and we're gonna bring it into Photoshop because Photoshop, as you know, has an extreme amount of power in it that gives us the ability to manipulate colors and tones in any way, shape, or form that we want. So the first and easiest way is to actually just use a solid color fill, okay? So if you, if you were to take uh, a solid color fill, and you can see this one's already pre-set up. It's got the color blend mode, and the reason why I use color blend mode is it allows all the luminance values underneath to show through the color that I'm putting on it, and it has an opacity of 15%. Okay. If I were to just go ahead and add a new color fill on top of here, hypothetically speaking, it's gonna be a solid color. And this is why people usually shy away from color grading because they're like, wait a second, <laughs> I need this color to invoke mood, not just fill my whole canvas with blue, right? Right. <laughs> so I'm gonna pick a, a, a phthalo blue here. A phthalo blue is kind of like a cyan and a uh, ultramarine blue mix. That's like one of my favorite colors to color grade with. And you'll, you'll notice it's like, whatever your favorite color was in the crayon box is pretty much what you're gonna go to for this. All right. <laughs> So phthalo blue, let's just take it for what it is. Um, if I were to change this to the color blend mode, like you saw before, the whole image is gonna get blue, which right. we don't want that, right? Now this would be cool for like a sepia tone or a cyanotype or something like that, but it's not cool for a, a landscape photo that I want to show a subtle hint of mood. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna just drop the opacity down to about 15%. I usually start there and then I work my way up or down if I need to. And you'll see that what it did is it just kind of, it, it took some of those really vibrant uh, orange tones that are in this image and it just pushed them back a little bit, made them a little bit more subtle. And that's a really, really awesome approach for color grading because what we're essentially doing here is if you look at a color wheel, we're using the reverse color or the complement color to tone down the colors that are too powerful without touching the powerful colors at all. Right. So if you take like a hue saturation adjustment layer and you just drop some saturation out of a color, you're actually hurting those pixels. Well, here, we're just washing that orange with blue and it's pushing it back. So right. we still have the intensity of the orange underneath. Nothing's damaged, nothing's broken, right? Right. So that's one way that I do that. The cool thing about this too, is that once this is set up, you got the color blend mode on there, opacity's at 15%. If you double click this, you can then change this color to any color you want on the fly yeah. And then you're like, ooh, wait, ah, oh, kind of like that magenta ish, purplish look. Look at that. Yeah. Uh, so immediately I thought that phthalo was going to be the color. <laughs> but I think, I don't know. I'm thinking I kind of like that purple. Kind of like that purple. That goes more towards my favorite color in the crayon box. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, purple is like the color of wisdom. So I, I could see why you would use that. <laughs> oh, geez. <laughs> 
<laughs> do I get any brownie points for that? <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. No, I like that. I like that a lot. And I do love that about the, uh, the color fillet layer is that you can uh, adjust the colors on the fly after the fact like that. But I've never done it in this uh, context. So that's really cool. Yeah. And typically where you would do this is on a, a, a relatively finished image. Okay. So right. if you were to put this color fill on a photo that's right out of Adobe Camera or Lightroom or straight out of camera, it won't look good. It's kind of like diet. You know, they say crap in, crap out. The same thing <laughs> happens with color theory. If you put crap into a good color, it's still going to be crap on the way out. Okay. Got it. So you got to doctor up the image a little bit, get your tones right, get your colors right, and then do color, color grading towards the end. Just like what uh, video artists do, you know, when you watch movies like uh, Game of Thrones or something like that, or uh, any of those HBO sitcoms specifically because they pay, they pay such particular attention to color, the color grading happens after. It doesn't happen in the camera. It happens afterwards to get the mood and the feeling subliminally pushed into your mind as you're watching the show. And the same right. thing is what we kind of are responsible for when we're showing people our photos. Very cool. So the other two things I use are a gradient fill and a gradient map. So a gradient map, really quickly here, um, a gradient map, I'm gonna go ahead and move this little camera thing down here. What a gradient map does is, this is already set up to soft light at 48%, but watch what happens when I change this to normal and then bring the opacity all the way up. Okay, so a gradient map is basically what the gradient map does. This is kind of like split toning in Lightroom or Adobe Camera Raw. The gradient map says, okay, I want your darkest colors to be the color that's on the left-hand side of this gradient. And I want your brightest colors to be the color that's on the uh, right-hand side. So the left-hand side is your darkest, right-hand side is your brightest. And then whatever happens as they come together and kind of get mixed together is what happens to your midtones. So this is actually my favorite way to make a black and white image because it makes the deepest, richest darks with the deepest, brightest brights and a beautiful transition in between without any color loss. Yeah. So how did, did you show how to make that gradient map layer? Sure, so what all you gotta do here is go down to your, where your adjustment layers are. Uh, yeah. I, I like to use this little thing right here, this little half circle down here at the yeah. bottom of Photoshop. And then there is a gradient map right here above selective color. All right, yeah. That's w one whole thing in, in that uh, adjustment layer menu I've never used. <laughs> really? Oh, man. Really? So what, what this does, it's gonna select whatever color you have in your palette right here. So I've got my foreground color, my background color, a cyan and a brown. Mm -hmm. So if I say gradient map, it's gonna make it look bad. And that's probably why you've never used it because it takes right. whatever colors are in your palette and that's not very good. But right. if you press the reverse button here, typically how I do this is I want my darkest color to be on the darkest side and my brightest color to be on the brightest side. So even right. with those two colors in here, if I change this to something like the soft light blend mode, look at that. Yeah. It's like magical dodging and burning. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> basically with the soft light blend mode, um, this is gonna give you, your your darks are gonna become darker without becoming black, but it's gonna yeah. add that blue or that brown to it. And your brights are gonna become brighter without ever getting pure white with the blue added to it. Yeah. So then if I drop the opacity on this a little bit, so it's not so powerful. That subtle hint of color mm -hmm. really pushes and it digs into all those cracks and crevices in the wall that have such character to them that make it look like the old man's face kind of deal, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, and that's that's one approach that I use there for color grading as well. I like it. And here's the cool part. You've already got this set up just like that solid color fill. If you pop up here and you click on the gradient map and just click on the color, any gradients that you have in your gradient editor, you can now apply to this and see how they would look very quickly. Awesome. So your, your, your mood can be altered and changed right there on the fly. I love it. Yeah. And again, this is just like your solid color uh, fill layer. Uh, it's a crap in, crap out concept. So you want to make sure that you're doing this color grading stuff towards the end. Even if you were going to you know, use that black and white transition uh, that we had there to make a black and white image, I would still recommend doing this. I'm going to reverse that so that it's black and white. Uh, I would still recommend doing this after you've already done all of your regular tone and color processing to right. then make a black and white photo. Wow. Very cool. Yeah. Very powerful black and white. It's the truest form of black and white um, huh. for the colors that you have. 
Right. So, yeah, really cool stuff. Fascinating. The last one I have is actually a gradient fill layer. And I'm okay. going to show you this concept here, but then I'm going to show you a practical application of it um, as if I'm building it up on another image so you can see it on something different. Okay. Um, kind of one of the things that, that we've talked about before is how you get the viewer to look at something over another thing is you kind of put a spotlight somewhere and a vignette around it, right? Yeah, absolutely. It's uh, something I do, uh, you know, I, something I use in my photos all the time. Right, so this is really cool. I think you're gonna like this gradient fill because with the gradient fill, um, I call this concept like making a convex piece of glass. So a piece of glass that pushes forward um, has a 3D look to it rather than a window that you would have in front of you, right? Right. So a lot of times our images can appear flat like a window. Well, we wanna make this look like a convex piece of glass that's coming towards the individual. And the way we do that is typically with the spotlight and the vignette, but here you can do it with color. You see that? Yeah, wow. So here I've added a creamish color to the center and then it gets blue around the corners, which then pushes the, the image back around the kind of like a vignette, but it's very subtle. Almost yeah. to the point that if I never showed you I was color grading, you wouldn't even know that I did that. Right. Right. So here is a practical application of that. So this is, this is where the gradient is so powerful. The gradient can be one of the most phenomenal tools in your toolbox. Um, the gradient fill, uh, gradient map is nice, but that maps out your colors to your tones. A solid color is nice, but that fills the whole image. But what right. if you wanna get a little bit more creative with it? That's where the gradient fill comes in. Gradient fill can be found right down here under gradient. So we go to our adjustment layers, layers and hit gradient. And again, it's not going to look good, just like everything in Photoshop. It right. doesn't look good when you first start, right? Right. I always talk about uh, almost every button in Photoshop. If you don't know what it's, what it's doing, it's the make your image look like crap button. <laughs> I like that. It's true. Um, so gradients, I, I, I just kind of was like, why would ever, anyone ever want to use a gradient? It's like the yeah. silliest tool in our toolbox, right? Um, and there's many different types of gradients. This is a linear gradient, which would be very similar to what you would have in um, Lightroom or Adobe Camera Raw where you put a graduated filter. So that's basically what this is. It's a graduated filter, but this is coming with color. And let's say I wanted that to go from the top to the bottom. So that's how it set this up as a linear gradient. And mm -hmm. there's many different gradients here, but I'm just gonna press this and press okay because I need to get this set up. Just like the other two, I need to get it set up. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna change this to the soft light blend mode, okay? And now you're kind of seeing the darks getting darker, the lights getting lighter with blue being added to that mix. Mm -hmm. So if we double click on that gradient, and we click on this color here, we can change this color or we can use any of the gradients that we have in our box. This is a blue going to transparency, which makes it like the graduated filter. But if right. I did this red to orange, look at how that landscape dramatically changes. Now, as I said, it's not the best thing in the world, but if we drop the opacity here, this is where you, you know, start to blend these things together. And it might not be the best color grade for this. Because if we look at the original image, if I were to really get analytical about this, I'm seeing hints of yellows and hints of magenta in here. So I probably don't necessarily want to use this very outlandish orange and red. But right. if I click, if I double click on this, and then I change this to, let's say this gradient, look at that. Mm -hmm. See that? that, that yellow to magenta hint is beautiful. But there's more. <laughs> <laughs> of so if I double click on here, that was just a linear gradient. Yeah. If I set this up as a reflected gradient and then I drop this scale down to one, you can see exactly where I'm going to place this reflection. Okay. And then if I bring the scale up, it's going to get magenta from the center, but I don't want that. Well, that's just like the other one. We had the reverse button, press yeah. the reverse. Look at that. So now the top's getting more magenta, foreground is getting more of the magenta, but the center has that nice. Um, glow that you would get from the sunset beaming across the image as you see here. Very fun. Another cool thing you can do here is if we change this to um, a gradient that I always thought was trash is this diamond gradient. <laughs> diamond. It's a diamond shape. Look at that. I mean, it looks yeah. hideous as you move this around. It's like a flashlight. <laughs> like like this looks like someone put a box around a flashlight. But what does that also look like a little bit? Ah, it looks like uh, a spot of light. Yeah. So... Boom, put it right there on the sun. Put it put it where Ow. the light source is. What? Yeah, right? Get out of town. And then if we make the make that bigger, oh, look at that. Yeah. 
Now, you don't even know there's a diamond there. Right. We know there's a diamond there, but yep. the viewer's not going to know there's a diamond there. Wow. That's and then you can, you know, you can still incorporate masking with this as well. So let's say the foreground here, you know, I don't want that to be on that rock there. I can just, you know, get a brush here and just brush with black along there so that that right. rock doesn't quite get that magenta because that would be a little, you know, not, right. not necessarily accurate. But, you know, whatever masking techniques you, you want to use here, you can use. Um, sure. Again, you got to be careful when you're masking it, though. You don't want to get that bleed there. But, you know, you, you get the idea. Yep. All right, yeah, so let's, 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 I'm going to stop sharing my screen now. Hold on a second. I'm going to talk to you a little about this real quick. All right. Stop, share. So what you see here is that now you take that concept that we've just talked about there with um, color grading, with either the solid color, the gradient map, or the gradient fill, and you combine that with what you do with you know exposure blending or luminosity masking, and the sky is literally the limit with color grading. Absolutely, yeah. That's really powerful. That is some great stuff. Um, thanks a lot for showing me that. That's, I mean, obviously the, the, the sensibility for what colors go well with each other and what colors you want to use, that's, a, that's kind of an acquired skill and an artistry there. But the ability to work with the colors and move them around and change them in those ways, man, that's really powerful. Because usually I'm, if I'm working with color, I'm usually just changing the hue, you know, of the whole thing or working with like color balance adjustment layers and things like that, where I'm, you know, those, those do a great job. Um, but those, that type of kind of more, um, sweeping ar artistic color change with that kind of control. Cause when I'm doing that kind of stuff, I'm usually trying to just kind of hand paint in colors and stuff. Right. It's, it's, it's really haphazard and hit and miss. But see, that's the important stuff that you do before you do the color grading. Exactly. So you do, you get your stuff set up the way it is with your tones and your colors and you get them looking good, but then you want to add the mood and you want to add that feeling in there. And the comfortable thing about this for anyone who's watching this, even, you know, when this does hit the YouTube channels is that it's all theory. We're practicing color. <laughs> it's theory. Right. <laughs> you, know, you can't do anything wrong with it. That's the cool thing. Yeah. I like it. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Blake. Thanks for showing me that. I can't wait to, um, you know, get on the computer and give some of this a try and uh, see what I can do with it. If I get anything good, I'll let you know, but it'll probably take me a while to kind of perfect it. <laughs> right. Well, no, that's cool because I need to hear about this exposure blending stuff. So, uh, you know, I'd like to see what you're doing with that too. Absolutely. Yeah. Glad to show you. Awesome. So I think you can tell by watching my face during the phone call that I was just hanging on for dear life. Blake was sharing so much information and so much uh, knowledge about color. It was all I could do just to keep up in the moment. But since then, I've had a chance to go back and review the video from our call and then try applying some of these ideas to uh, a couple of my photos just to uh, see if I could make anything work. And, and I still have a long ways to go. I'm still working on it, but I think I've, I've come up with some stuff that's pretty good. So let's go over to the computer and I can show you what I've figured out so far. All right, so this first image here, I, I like this spot on the Oregon coast. And this was kind of twilight, long exposure, you know, the wave motions all kind of uh, blurred out. Uh, I like it. It's a really dramatic scene, but I, I've never really been happy with the colors. It's kind of blue hour and it's, it's a little too blue. And yet I do want it to feel kind of twilighty. So I don't know, no matter what I did, if I tried to adjust the colors, uh, I just never got it where I liked it. And in fact, eventually I just decided that I would just go full black and white with it just because I couldn't get the colors where I liked. Well, based on Blake's information and the stuff he was showing us, I decided to try putting a gradient fill adjustment layer on there. And this is the gradient that I came up with. And let's see what the effect is. So you can see it's, it's subtle. But what it's done is it's warmed up some of the cools and darkened them. And it's also allowed some light to come in and some warmer light to come in from the side. It creates a little more dimension. It, I think, feels a little more balanced and gives the eye some place to draw to. It is really subtle, but it's a big change. If we take a look at what adjustments I made there, so I'm using actually the, uh, the diamond uh, gradient style that he showed us in the phone call. And the gradient that, I'm, that I made kind of goes from kind of a peach color 
through some darker oranges and reds and then eventually we get into this purplish blue color and uh, yeah so that's how that one came out let's go on the next one this is an image of the painted hills in oregon that i like the drama in the clouds i like the composition that i was able to get with the grasses in the foreground but the colors again just aren't right it's too kind of bluey greeny through the hills but when i try to make adjustments for the color balance to get those colors feeling better then i lose the colors uh, in the clouds kind of this kind of blue gray steely thunderstorm that was going on so again uh, another gradient fill adjustment layer and a similar gradient to what i made on the last one slightly different though and this time I just applied it through the center of the image. If you take a look here, I'm using the linear style. So that linear gradient is just across the center here. Actually, no, I take it back. It fades up from the bottom to the top and creates kind of a warmer bottom layer. But I didn't like it being warm all the way into the foreground. So I painted on the mask in some areas down the foreground. So it's kind of cool, fades to warm, draws the eye. The hills are the color they should be. And then back to that unaffected or slightly darkened sky back there. And the warmth is seeping up into the skyline back here a little bit from that gradient. And I could mask that out if I didn't want that to have any effect, but I actually like that little bit of warmth that it's putting back there. All right, and in this last example, this is an image of Smith Rock that uh, I generally like. I love the clouds, I love the light, I love the time of day, the composition's a classic, but this sky color here, in combination with the colors in the clouds, just isn't working for me. It's kind of weird, bluey, greeny, yellowy sky. Uh, and then this really nice cotton candy pink clouds. And so for this, I used a gradient map and I used the gradient map to map some warmer colors into the highlights of the sky. And here's the colors there. So these reds are what are going into those lighter areas of the sky. And then we're fading to kind of a neutral blue in the rest of the image. Uh, so that the darker parts of the image or the darker tones really aren't being affected that much. They are being slightly cooled and darkened. And because I didn't want that effect to go everywhere into the shadows, I created this mask with a dark luminosity mask selection and painted that mask so that I could keep that bluer, darker color out of the deepest shadows. So that's what I was able to come up with. Like I said, I still have a long way to go, but uh, it's a great start. I'm really excited about it. It's some new ideas for me to work with in my images. I can see that as I practice with it, it's really going to have a lot of applications and I think it's really going to up the level of my images overall. So I really want to say thanks to Blake for helping me out with that. If you haven't already, head over to his channel so you can check out the part of our phone call where I show him about exposure blending. And while you're over there, make sure to subscribe to Blake's channel. He posts Photoshop tutorials all the time. And thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you again in the next one.